I had a student ask me recently, what does the geometric mean? What is it used for? And you know, the simple answer is it's used for things when we we'd normally multiply them. And it's a little bit different than the arithmetic mean. With the arithmetic mean, we're looking at things when we add them up and we divide by the number of them. And with uh, things like investments or interest rates or population growth or things like that, we're doing an operation of multiplication to figure out uh, what the population is after so many years if it has a rate of increase of 4% or 3%. Same thing with an investment. If we have an investment that grows at 4% annually, we're going to be multiplying that principal amount times that rate of return to figure out what our investment is worth at the end of it. So the simple answer is we use it when we have products. And the, the geometric mean is defined as this right here. And sometimes they use a capital G, but the geometric mean is the nth root of the product of x sub 1 times x sub 2 times dot 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 times x sub n. There are n terms in this. And we take the nth root. So for example, if there were only four terms, we would take the fourth root. If there were 100 terms, we would take the hundredth root, so on and so forth. All right, and the scenario that I want to present this with to hopefully make sense and help you understand how to calculate it is one that deals with investments. So what it says is you're in charge of evaluating investment opportunities for individuals and need to determine which of the following is a better investment. And we're defining that by a higher rate of return. Investment A had a quarterly rate of return of 4, 3, 10, and 6% for last year. Investment B had a semi-annual rate of return of 4 and 8% last year. Which investment has the higher rate of return? And that's our question that we need to answer. And we're going to answer using the geometric mean. And before I get to that, I want to talk about a couple advantages to using the geometric mean. Is one, it it strips away some of the information that we don't necessarily need to know. In other words, we're only going to look at what this is in terms of an annual rate of return, so that average over one year. The calculation focuses only on the return figures. And then the geometric mean gives us a good way to compare apples to apples. So in other words, if we had $1,000 in investment A and $100,000 in investment B, it gets a little bit tricky to compare the two investments, all right, because they're not on the same terms. So it strips away some of that information. We compare it on a percentage basis. So before we can begin calculating the geometric mean, the first thing we need to do is we kind of have to condition these numbers. Just like we would if we were finding what value our investment would be after one year, we would take that principal amount, we would multiply it by one plus that rate if it were an annual rate of return. We, we, have, to do, we have to do some conditioning for beforehand. We have to add that one in there. So we're going to convert the 4% to 1.04 because this would be the multiplying factor for finding our rate of return. The next one would be 1.03, next one would be 1.10, and the last one would be 1.06. Now when we find that geometric mean, I'm going to abbreviate this G with a subscript A for data set A. Since there are four data points, we're going to take the fourth root of the product of all those terms. All right. So we have 1.04 times 1.03 times 1.10 times 1.06. All right, and then when we find the product of all those numbers, this ends up being the fourth root of 1.2490192. And that's probably enough terms right there. All right, so when we take the fourth root of this, this ends up being 1.0572 approximately. And one thing that we have to remember is that at the very beginning, we had to add this one right here to each of those terms. So this one right here is Im important, and we need to take that out now because our percentage rate, we need to convert this back to a percentage to find out what the actual rate is. So this 1.0572 is that multiplying factor, or we can back that one out of there and this becomes 5.72% on an annual basis. So that is what the rate of return for investment A is, 5.72%. Now when we look at investment B, it's going to be very similar. We're going to have to add that one in front of each of these terms to kind of condition them. So 1.04 and 1.08, those are two new terms. And since there's only two terms, we're going to be taking the square root. So we know how to do that with our calculators. And this is going to be investment B. 
so we use a subscript b. So this is the second root, and we don't necessarily have to write that too. The square root of 1.04 times 1.08. And that product, and I'm going to leave the 2 off the square root this time, that product is 1.1232. All right, and then once we take the square root of that, that's going to be 1.0598 approximately. All right, and again, we have this one right here that we have to back out of there. That was This is actually the multiplying factor when we're calculating that annual rate of return on that dollar amount. So we back that one out of there, and this really becomes 5.98% as our annual rate of return. So when we compare these two numbers, we can obviously see that investment B gives us a higher annual rate of return, which is 5.98%. So this is an example of the geometric mean and how we would use it. And hopefully this makes sense and you'll be able to use this for other problems that you encounter.